Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. Hello, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be attempting to make a dragon's beard candy. Now, this candy has been requested by so many of you, so I am here today to finally attempt it. And if you're not familiar with this candy, it is a hand-pulled candy where you take a solid puck of hard candy and you transform it from something that looks like a noodle into something that looks so fine it's like hair or a dragon's beard. So this candy is said to have originated in China but is made in many different countries and goes by many different names including Pashmak and Guldore. So today I'm going to be making the most basic white traditional form. I'm not even going to add any food coloring and I've watched several videos. Shout out to Clifford and Corinne and Jen for doing all the legwork for me. So hopefully this will be, you know, relatively manageable. <laughs> So this is really simple. Basically, we're going to be making a syrup that we're going to cook down to a very specific temperature and stage of sugar. Now, sugar is pretty amazing. If you heat it up and get it to a certain temperature, it changes its solid state. We're going to be cooking this particular syrup to about 170 degrees, which is the hardball stage, but it's going to act a little bit more like a taffy because we're going to be stretching it. So this is what's very interesting about this. Also, the technique of making the actual candy is fast. I've watched this, so many videos of Korean vendors in particular doing this in front of people and it's fascinating and mesmerizing and so satisfying to see the math of one ring becomes two, becomes four, becomes eight, becomes 16, becomes 32. And then you get to see a visual representation of exponential growth or compound interest like, yeah, all oh right, I get it, exponents. Anyways, geeking out a little bit too much about this, let's go ahead and make this syrup. Two cups of sugar and put it into our saucepan. We're gonna add a quarter cup of light corn syrup. Spatula and get every little bit of that. This is the interesting ingredient. We're gonna add a half teaspoon of vinegar. One cup of water. So now we're gonna heat this up on medium heat and we're gonna bring this up to 268 degrees and then we're gonna turn off the heat because then it's gonna have some heat inertia and bring it up to 271 degrees. That's the temperature we want it at. So a candy thermometer is pretty important in here. I picked this up for about $10, really inexpensive and I actually use it a lot. So recommend doing that. Now we've got it to a boil. It actually smells very vinegary. <laughs> mm, vinegar steam bath, lovely. I actually had Dragon's Beard Candy for the first time. I think it was in one of my Emmy Eats Korea videos. I'll put the link down below. I haven't done an Emmy Eats video in a long time, but if you want to see me eat lots of international treats, I will put the link down below and also put a link to a map that shows you all the countries that I've eaten in my Emmy Eats series. Super fun, super fun. You learn so much about a culture through its food. While this is cooking, we're going to take a brush and we're going to rub the sides of the pot with some water. And that's going to remove any crystals that have formed on the outside, crystals of sugar. Now we don't want those crystals of sugar to enter the syrup because that can act like a seed and threaten to crystallize the whole pot of syrup. So I will be back when this gets to 270 degrees. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. So my syrup has come up to temperature and here we are now. Now we're gonna let it cool to about 212 degrees so it doesn't melt our plastic takeout containers. We're gonna pour the hot syrup into this and the reason why is the sugar is going to harden and it will come free of this plastic container pretty easily so we can just kind of squeeze it out. So before we can work it into a candy, we're gonna allow the syrup to harden almost completely. It should still have some give to it but it should still be pretty firm. So many of you think that I am perfect and I am far from it. I have editing on my side and there are plenty of bloopers. If you watch my videos to the very end, you've probably seen some of them. At any rate, the first batch of syrup that I cooked, I let go too long. It went to about 300 degrees. It's getting close to the hard crack stage. It is at the hard crack stage. So rather than throwing this out, I poured the syrup onto a silpat sheet and then I divided it into two blobs and it has cooled down quite a bit and it's quite malleable. I cannot make dragon's beard candy with this because it is overcooked. Candy will be the wrong texture. But I think what is interesting is I think this might actually be the texture in which I can blow the candy. I wanted to share my failure with you because a lot can be learned from it. In fact, that's how we learn, right? This is a pure experiment. I've never done this before. Four. Take some of this and wrap it around something. Mm -hmm. Yay! Look at that! 
I got a balloon. I got a balloon. So awesome. Lesson learned is that don't throw away your failures. Don't be discouraged because you could discover something new. Awesome. I have a big tray of cornstarch. There we go. When I watched the Korean vendors doing this, they had a special little wooden awl they used. It almost looked like a citrus reamer, but it was flat and they poked right into the middle of it. Now we're just gonna work this. So lots of squeezing and lots of cornstarch. I love that sound. Can you hear that? Oh, not good. So that was too hard. Let's try that again to start shaping this ring. Ring. Now we're going to twist. And now we have four. Oh, I very cleverly wore a black shirt. <laughs> not very clever. Twist back together again. Now we have eight. This takes some strength and definitely some patience. Oh, I just broke mine. See, this is not working. This does not look like a beard. Mustache. Beautiful dragon's beard candy, isn't it gorgeous? Look, it looks just like edible hair. Like if you have like stalactites for hair. All right, so I'm gonna try this again. I'm not gonna cook it for as long. And I might not be wearing black. Right. Greetings, my lovelies, I am back. So last night around 11 o'clock, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw on my stories that I cooked up another batch of this syrup. This is the third batch of this syrup. <laughs> This is becoming like worse than jiggly cheesecake in terms of just level of, you know, inaneness. I made sure I carefully monitored the temperature and as it was heating, I did it slower. And then as it got closer to the 268 degree range, I turned off the heat and removed it from the heat and it still went up a little bit, but it didn't climb above like it did on my second batch. And I think that's what the problem was is that it actually went above 207 degrees, started going to the hard crack stage, which made the syrup too brittle, to stretch. That's my hypothesis at least. <laughs> That's just the way it goes, right? Now, this is gonna take some muscle. All right, now we wanna try to apply as even pressure as possible because we wanna maintain this ring shape and make sure that it's equidistant and centered. Yes, feels better already. Do, 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 drop in my car. Okay, stop it. I don't wanna do this too quickly because I don't want to thin this out too thin in certain spots and have it be too thick in certain other spots. So we have a ring, it's probably about 15 inches across. Now we're gonna twist it and double it up. So from two, we have four. So with every twist, we're going to be doubling this. Twist, figure eight, pull together. Now we have eight. Love this. Twist, 16. 32. Make sure we keep dusting because we don't want these to stick as we're pulling. It's amazing, as if you do this more, it becomes easier to pull them. 32, 64. 128, it's getting kind of messy. All right, doubling it again. So we're at 256, doubling it again. Now we're at 512. 512, do it again. And this is 1024. Now it becomes really easy to stretch once you get it really thin. Twist and pull, 2048. It's working! 2048, <laughs> pull, twist, keep pulling. Now we're at 4,096, man, this is awesome. Two more turns, 8,192. This is my 13th twist and pull. All right, this is so awesome. Okay, 
And now, final pull, 16,384. Definitely not perfect, but this is 16,384 strands. <laughs> I love it. It is so awesome. I did it. I'm so happy. So this candy is very sensitive to humidity and we have a thunderstorm coming in. So it is very, very humid. So it's going to be very important to use a lot of cornstarch and then use a pair of chopsticks to kind of twirl it ever so gently. And that'll be a serving, and then tear it. So now that everything is covered in cornstarch, let's give our dragon's beard candy a taste. All right, I'm gonna try this little dainty one that looks like a little cocoon. Here we go. Ah. <laughs> it's the lucky mouse. <laughs> That's absolutely delightful. It has such a wonderful texture. It has that same familiar melt in your mouth consistency of cotton candy, but it's a little bit more substantial. There's actually a little bit of a chew to it, a slightly kind of taffy like feeling, but it just kind of all dissolves. And although we didn't flavor this with anything, this is still got some flavor to it. It's a little bit caramelized because we have cooked the sugar to pretty high temperature, so it's got a slightly caramel flavor. The bit of vinegar in there does not make this tangy at all. It actually makes it less sugary, which is nice, but it's not at all unpleasant. It's really, really delightful. I think for me, mostly it's about that melt away, simultaneous chewy texture delightful. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy that one. I hope you guys learned something. Share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media so you know what videos are coming up next and what little giveaways I'm doing and little behind the scenes things about like my failures and trials and tribulations in just life and cooking in general. And I shall see you in my next one. Take care. Bye.